most of my um, normal people will not really know who Peter Shickley was, um, but as a musician um, and a musician of a certain era, you know, I, I've been playing an instrument since 1993. Um, he, Peter Shickley at that time period would have still been very popular um, I did not find out who Peter Shickley was until 2002 when my college band director played for me an excerpt of his and me and a couple of my friends were hooked immediately we have used Peter Shickley comments and videos for years uh, falling into a confused slumber is uh, definitely one of Peter Shickley's things and unfortunately he has passed away at 88. Um, Peter Shickley uh, went to Juilliard, had a master's in composition. Um, he did 12 albums. Many of them being nominated for a Grammy. Uh, he had nine Grammy nominations. He won five, three of them for Best Comedy Album. So he won more Grammys for Best Comedy Album, or tied at least, I think, with Robin Williams. And people uh, have already been talking today, how did he win so many comedy or nominate? He was nominated for even more. I believe he was nominated for uh, five total comedy albums. Now, because two of his Grammy wins were not comedy wins. One was for Best Children's um book we did Peter and the Wolf and then he got one uh, for O oh, Calcutta uh, back in the 12th ever Grammys <laughs> for best original score so he did have other nominations for his comedy uh, a lot of it was very funny uh, he, he did a lot with the Boston Pops under John Williams uh, he did a lot of work with the Canadian Brass and he was on The Tonight Show quite a few times in the 80s after he went on the first time. He was brought back, and he was one of the few people to get more than two segments. Usually you'd get your comedy, and then you'd talk, and that was it. They let him do two music performances in his first one, and then he had a interview that was through two segments. He, he ended up like canceling somebody out that was supposed to be on, and he brought him back. So... It was a big deal. Um, Peter Shickley, to me, is a big deal. I have a lot of his albums. Um, I have his book on PDQ Bach. PDQ Bach being the 21st of Bach's 20 sons. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And losing him, we knew it was coming, but it, it sucks. It really sucks. And I'm putting up this video today, and... What I'm going to have right now is a video of him on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show in 1987 performing two of his pieces and then doing an interview. Um, if you've never seen him before, I hope you take the time to look at this and maybe think about getting a hold of one of his albums. It'll be worth your time, I promise. So, thank you, Peter Shickley, for all the years of making me laugh. Um, and far more than even I've been alive, and I hope that we can continue to keep your legacy alive through your wonderful music. Whew, this is a hard one, everybody. Bye. And I said bye. <laughs> Don't turn off the video yet. I'm saying bye. I want you all to watch the video that comes on after this. So rest in peace, Mr. Shickley. You done good. You have to listen to this introduction closely. It'll give you some idea of what Mr. Ashikala is about. He is the head of the Department of Musical Pathology at the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople. He's an authority on the music of P.D.Q. Bach, who is the 21st of Johann Sebastian Bach's 20 children. <laughs> Would you welcome Professor Peter Schickele?
I'm going to be playing a work by PDQ Bach uh, with the orchestra here, but I just, we didn't plan this, but I would like to do something a little different, you know. A lot of people say that the reason I always play with orchestra is because I'm not a very good pianist, and, and if I played alone, everybody would know that. I'd like to play, if I could, I'd just like to play a solo piano piece, a piece that everybody knows. It's Johann Sebastian Bach, the prelude in C major from the Well-Tempered Clavier. That's better. Formal here. Uh, the next work is by Johann Sebastian Bach's son, uh, PDQ Bach. Uh, this is an excerpt from a very large, not to say gross work, uh, <laughs> for piano and orchestra called Variations on an Unusually Simple Minded Theme. Professor. Good to see you, Professor Hello, how do you do? 
The audience is a little bit bewildered, Professor. So am I. Yes, all right. We'll come back and try to sort that out in just a second, right after this. Just join us. We're going to sort this out, man. Now, Professor, I I noticed a, a little look of puzzlement on the audience's face. Now, apparently, they are not familiar with P. D. Q. Bach uh, as much as you are. I have not been able to find him in any musical dictionaries at all. No, I know. I, I, my research is into P. D. Q. Bach is a very lonely affair. I bet uh, I've been kicked out of the AMJ, the American Musicological Junta. Uh, <laughs> They refuse to have anything to do with me. Uh, but I must say that the, that the researchers have sort of gained me a certain niche, because if you study Beethoven and Mozart, or hundreds of other people studying those composers, right. so but nobody else is studying P.D.Q. Mm -hmm. Bach. I really pretty got it, much got it to myself. When did you first discover that there was a P.D.Q. Bach? Well, I was traveling in Europe, and uh, a very a curious thing in the a castle called the Lechendach Schloss, the castle of the leaking roof in southern Bavaria. I found being used as a strainer in the caretaker's percolator uh -huh. uh, a manuscript that turned out to be uh, the Sanka Cantata by P.D. Q. Bach. <laughs> and, uh, so you thought you stumbled on something? That was, right, yeah. right, yeah. And he, you see, other people's music tended to keep this guy awake, apparently. But uh, P.D. Q. Bach wrote him a piece that that wouldn't be a problem with. Um, so ever since then, I've discovered over 75 uh, works by P.D. Q. Bach. And, uh, you the mentioned bottom... just one or two of them that we might have Well, yes, from? there's a there's a dramatic oratorio called Oedipus Tex. Oedipus Tex? Yes. That's a story about a gunslinger who uh, shoots a man who turns out to be his father and marries a lady who turns out to be his mother. That's not the path to happiness. It's a nasty affair, yeah. Yeah. And there's also an opera called A Little Nightmare Music uh, that is PDQ's version of how Mozart died. And there's also a charming little piece called The Fanfare for the Common Cold. Uh -huh. uh, I think the musicians will agree that it's very rare to see the, the indication in music, Snizando. Snizando. This piece has that, yeah. Well, you've discovered a, a, a sleeping giant there, I guess. You've it's, it's really amazing. As I say, 22 years, 75 pieces, and the bottom of the barrel is nowhere in sight. And we haven't, haven't even touched the good stuff yet. Right. Okay, well, next time, we'll, we'll bring them up to date on that. <laughs> the audience still going, what? <laughs> right, right, right. We'll take a break. Then we have from Leningrad, the Leningrad Dixieland Jazz Band. Uh, I suppose next time you will discover some more uh, manuscripts of uh, P.D.Q. Bach. I think the chances are very small that I won't. Oh, I see. You, you are actually you are actually a serious. Uh, you, you studied classical music, didn't you? Yes, I went to Juilliard, uh, and as a matter of fact, it was at Juilliard that I first started doing these uh, humorous concerts, just for the, an in-school kind of thing. Right. Little did I know that uh, 22 that, years later. Got out of hand. Yeah, yeah. right. I would. I would. I thought that when I grew up, I'd start doing it, but stop doing it, but uh, I guess I never grew up. You know, up. it's a good way to teach music, seriously, because a lot of kids, when they go to school, who are not musically inclined, find it kind of dull. And I think if you can put some humor into it, the kids will learn a lot, a lot more it's, and appreciate it. It's very interesting. I uh, get people telling me that they sometimes got interested in classical music through P.D.Q. Bach, too, which is, which is pretty strange if you think about it. But uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of P.D.Q. Bach pieces have these in, in, uh, quotes from other classical pieces. He, he had a... a he had a talent for manic plagiarism. Manic plagiarism. And uh, sometimes people get interested in the pieces that those pieces came from, you know? Thank you, Peter, for being here. We'll see you tomorrow with all of those people I mentioned.